Hells and Ghouls, what is a Halloween celebration without a spook show? Exactly. Exactly. Exactly indeed. So can you tell us about uh, what brand of spookiness do you do? Well, we do a spook show that's based in old 50s and 60s comic books. A lot of the comics, the terror comics that were banned in... Uh, 1954. Yeah. That's our bread and butter. So we do a full-on spook show. Uh, it's a variety show also, so we have live music. And we do all of our performances like an old radio show. So standing up at music stands with live sound effects, we project the art behind us. There's a little bit of magic show in there too. and all kinds so, of stuff. so this is something that you do on dead. Undead. Oh, yes, exactly. Excellent. Yeah, we try to make it as live as possible. Exactly. <laughs> it's an all live show. Terrific, terrific. And uh, as far as do you take the stories directly from yeah. you know, the comics? Yeah, we try it. So, one of the things, one of the reasons why we're called Capture Oral Fantasy is it's about capturing found art, which we okay. consider the comics. So, these things are great if you read them perfectly straight and try not to edit them at all. Um, so, we take the, the words and yeah, obviously do that like a uh, radio show. And then, like I said, project the art, which is gorgeous art, and uh, that provides our backdrop for all of our stuff. Very cool, very cool indeed. And uh, one thing that's cool about about comic books, especially at that time, um, they were very dialogue heavy, oh, yeah. which is a good thing. Boils and ghouls. I, I do enjoy reading, despite the look. Um, but yeah, so I, I bet there's a lot to play with. Oh God, yeah. So at the time, um, especially late '40s and early '50s, and especially EC comics, which you probably have heard, of, like Terrors from the Crypt or uh, Tales from the Crypt, they had some of the top writers who were you know science fiction writers they would um, you know Ray Bradbury was uh, wrote for those guys and then combine that with some of the greatest art in in comics Frank Frazetta started with them um, uh, Wally Wood all those all those guys so it's like a really really rich mine that a lot of people have forgotten about oh absolutely absolutely now, now what was the antithesis of this what what was the moment that you're like you know what let's take this. this live all right well that's a long conversation actually uh, so my colleagues and I, we started this in Chicago a long okay. time ago. And um, actually, it was a friend of mine who used to do it as a kid in the 60s when these were all new comics. Oh, wow. And he started, you know, got together with a bunch of us um, in Chicago, and we started putting it up in, you know, bars and stuff like that. And then when I moved and some of my friends moved to L.A., we decided to bring it back to L.A. So Excellent. we've been doing it. This is our fifth anniversary, actually. So it's right. great that you came by because it's a celebration for us. See, it was absolutely four to it is boils and goals yes indeed That's right. yes indeed now um you mentioned some live music and yeah. stuff. Is it is it is it creepy? Oh yeah. So our house band is the Noble Gases, which with, whoa, uh, which uh, we are a, an instrumental surf band. Nice. And uh, definitely the creepy surf stuff uh, is our bread and butter. Um, and actually, we played here uh, in the morning while people are waiting in line. So yeah, it's uh, surfy stuff. We bring in all kinds of bands, but you know the sort of bedrock is the Noble Gases. Um, and actually, the guitar player is also in the group. He's the narrator for all of our shows um, and yeah, yeah. now now when you, when you go to do one of these stories uh, do you have a hard time scumming up with character voices for the different roles or fortunately no well fortunately in a good way unfortunately also in a good way <laughs> um, no we've got a really super talented team and they can always come up with crazy characterizations I mean it's this weird sort of thing like you can look at the comic and get a character from the image or you just like read the dialogue in the voice comes but yeah everybody's really talented I just sort of heard them all together they they do all the, the great work well and it must be hard uh, going for you know a good voice but still trying to stay in the spooky realm absolutely. versus going too far and being too funny absolutely and let me tell you so even though we do comic books we try not to perform it as a cartoon or like in that over melodramatic comic okay. you very real very sincere very straight and, uh, and you know once in a while we put on a you know a spooky voice but we still even try to do that without too much of our tongue in our cheek of course. because the comedy is all written in there if you if you let it come out naturally <laughs> oh absolutely absolutely now I myself am dying to see this terrific uh, insanity. Yep. Uh, the creeps watching at home, where can they find out about you? Where can they seize you? I'm glad you asked. Um, so you can find us at capturedauralfantasy.com, and that's captured aural, A U R A L, and fantasy with the PH because we like to make it really difficult. 
Um, well, I'm sure if you put in oral fantasy, you might get something different. Exactly. Yeah, it, that's true. That's true. But it's oral because we use our ears. Um, or you can find us on Facebook at Captured Oral Fantasy Theater with an ER, not an RE, uh, you know, at Facebook. And that's probably the best way to get to know us. We play every first Sunday at El Cid in Silver Lake here in LA nice. and then various locations around town. Very cool. You got that, Boils and Ghouls? You're obviously watching the show online right now, so just, just go over there. Like them on Facebook right now. Just do it. Go on. We'll Maybe wait. I'll even send you a, a link. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 